Chapter 39 of A Popular History of the Art of Music from the Earliest Times Until the Present by W. S. B. Matthews. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Later Composers and Performers. Before summing up the remaining names of musical history, a brief retrospect over the present century may be in place the first quarter of the nineteenth century was distinguished by two composers of the first order beethoven and schubert and by a large number of highly gifted lesser artists some of whom such as spohr and weber bid fair to remain long enrolled in the list of immortals the second quarter of the century was made memorable by the rise and blossoming into full glory of the romantic school all the works of this school excepting a few of the earlier of mendelssohn having been produced during this period mendelssohn schumann chopin and the young wagner were the active spirits of this time and their productions not only enriched the store of the world's tone poetry but changed the general direction of musical ideals in many ways the great feature of the third quarter of the century was the conception and execution of the wagnerian music drama with its wealth of sense in citation and its somber appeal to accumulated experiences of the race the ring of the nibelungen was completed during this period and received its first performance at bayreuth in 1876 during the same period franz liszt had conceived a modification of the symphony form bringing its four movements into a single one or uniting the different movements if such there were by means of motives common to all or several of them in this way a certain novelty was attainable in the most important province of instrumental music and while the new compositions generally acknowledged their indebtedness to external incitation by titles such as what one sees from a mountain the battle of the huns romeo and juliet and the like there was nothing to prevent them being in the fullest sense musical works having a musical life as such wholly independent of the suggestion given by the title berlioz had been the founder of program music and his leading works had been produced during the second quarter of the century but their full force was not recognized until later it was a follower of liszt the brilliant frenchman camille saint saens who stated the central thesis of the whole romantic school when he said that a composer had the same right to affix a title to his work in order to give it a pleasing standpoint for judging it as a painter had to name his picture and in the case of music he added as in that of painting the real question finally was not whether the suggestion of the title had been fully satisfied but whether the picture were good painting and the composition good music if it were good music no flaw in the title and no disagreement between the title and the work could impair its value and lasting quality when carefully scrutinized the progress of music during the present century has been governed by certain leading principles which are not contradictory although at first glance they might appear so since the time of the netherlandish contrapuntists the primary impulse in musical creation has been the musical ideal the creation of tonal fancies novel inspiring musical satisfactory out of this desire has arisen the entire fabric of fugue sonata symphony and the whole world of free music and at every period there have been those also who sought to connect these tonal fancies with the inner life of the spirit to awaken feeling inspire imagination deepen dramatic impression in short to give us in place of irresponsible tonal crystallizations a poetically conceived discourse operative upon the feelings and stimulative to the entire mind this was the ideal of the new movement in italy at the beginning of the seventeenth century and opera has steadily worked along this ideal sebastian bach had moments when he himself attempted the program music and beethoven made many attempts of the same kind some of which are significant and lasting hence the romantic impulse was not something new in the history of music but the blossoming of buds from seeds planted long before the program music of berlioz 
scales was simply larger and more flamboyant than the little exercises of bach in the same direction wagner's idea of bringing together the entire resources of musical dramatic and scenic art into a single highly complex work was merely the idea of the unity of all the arts upon which aeschylus worked two thousand years earlier and upon which jacopo peri and claudio monteverdi worked at the beginning of the seventeenth century in short the art of music while in this century being enriched by a multitude of new creations representing a variety of subordinate ideals is nevertheless still a unity constantly becoming more elaborate and masterly upon the tonal side and continually more and more in touch with the deeper springs of duration in art the intuitively realized correspondence between certain art forms and modes of expression and human feeling the composers of the last quarter of the century are very numerous indeed so numerous that a catalogue even of their names would occupy too much space moreover their proximity to our own times brings them too near for successfully estimating their places in the pantheon of art or even for the much simpler task of deciding upon certain names which undoubtedly should occupy places in the list for present purposes it will be more convenient to notice them by nationalities since every racial stock has certain individualities and ideals which the national composers eventually bring into art as we see brilliantly illustrated in the case of the russians both in music and in painting there are however certain names which stand out above all others and at the present writing appear destined for place among or very near the immortals of the first order these great names are those of johannes brahms camille saint saon peter ilich tchaikowsky antonin dvorak and edvard grieg part one music in germany in germany very naturally the activity in the higher departments of music remains more intense than in any other country and the seat of musical empire may be said to still abide in southern germany where it was established by haydn mozart and beethoven the most eminent living composer in the higher department of the art johannes brahms resides at vienna since these many years there also max bruch long resided and there the greatest of the light opera composers the strauss family and von suppe have lived and worked it is in the provinces of the austro-hungarian empire moreover that the bohemian composer dvorak has his home in johannes brahms eighteen thirty three we have still living a musical master of the first order whose quality as master is shown in his marvelous technique in which respect no recent composer is to be mentioned as his superior if any can be named since bach his equal this technique was at first personal at the pianoforte upon which he was a virtuoso of phenomenal rank but this renown great as it is in well-informed circles sinks into insignificance beside his marvelous ability at marshalling musical periods elaborating together the most dissimilar and apparently incompatible subjects and his powers of varying a given theme and of unfolding from it ever something new these wonderful gifts for such they were rather than laboriously acquired attainments brahms showed at the first moment when the light of musical history shines upon him it was in eighteen fifty three when the hungarian violinist eduard remenyi found him at hamburg and engaged him as accompanist and having ascertained his astonishing talents brought him a young man of twenty to list at weimar with his first trio and certain other compositions in manuscript the new talent made a prodigious effect upon liszt who needed not that any one should certify to him whether a composer had genius or merely talent the liszt circle took up the brahms cult in earnest played the trio at the chamber concerts and the members when they departed to their homes generally carried with them their admiration of this new personality which had appeared in music 
johannes brahms was born at hamburg may seventh eighteen thirty three the son of a fine musician who was player upon the double bass in the orchestra there the boy was always intended for a musician and his instruction was taken in hand with so much success that at the age of fourteen he played in public pieces by bach and beethoven and a set of original variations at the age of twenty he was a master and it was in this year that he accompanied remeni made the acquaintance of joachim and liszt and had a rarely appreciative notice from a master no less than robert schumann himself who in his new journal of music said he has come a youth at whose cradle graces and heroes kept watch sitting at the piano he began to unveil wonderful regions we were drawn into more and more magical circles by his playing full of genius which made of the piano an orchestra of lamenting and jubilant voices there were sonatas or rather veiled symphonies songs whose poetry might be understood without words piano pieces both of a demoniac nature and of the most graceful form sonatas for piano and violin string quartets each so different from every other that they seem to flow from many different springs whenever he bends his magic wand there when the powers of the orchestra and the chorus lend him their aid further glimpses of the magical world will be revealed to us may the highest genius strengthen him meanwhile the spirit of modesty dwells within him his comrades greet him at his first entrance into the world of art where wounds may perhaps await him but bay and laurel also we welcome him as a valiant warrior the next few years were spent by brahms in directing orchestra and chorus at detmold and elsewhere and in switzerland which has always had great attraction for him in eighteen fifty nine he played in leipzig his first great piano concerto most of the criticisms thereon were however such as now excite mirth lately he has played in leipzig again conducted several of his works and was greeted with the reverence and enthusiasm due the greatest living representative of the art of music in eighteen sixty two brahms located in vienna where he has almost ever since resided mr louis kestelborn in famous composers and their works says about thirty years ago the writer first saw brahms in his swiss home at that time he was of a rather delicate slim-looking figure with a beardless face of ideal expression since then he has changed in appearance until now he looks the very image of health being stout and muscular the noble manly face surrounded by a full gray beard the writer well remembers singing under his direction watching him conduct orchestra rehearsals hearing him play alone or with orchestra listening to an after-dinner speech or private conversation observing him while attentively listening to other works and seeing the modest smile with which he accepted or rather declined expressions of admiration the most important works of brahms aside from his german requiem are four symphonies for orchestra two concertos for piano a concerto for violin and cello with orchestra a violin concerto many songs a variety of compositions for chamber embracing a number for unusual combinations of instruments such as clarinet and horn with piano sonatas for piano solo etc in the songs he attains a simple and direct expression not surpassed in musical quality since schubert and schumann in the concertos he is more for music than for display which is merely to say that in conceiving the display of his solo instrument he has sought rather to display it at its best in a musical sense than to exhibit its peculiar tricks of dexterity as a symphonist he follows classic form and is more successful than any other writer in the slow movements a department in which most of the later writers are distinctly weak since in an idealized folk song which is the essential ideal of the symphonic slow movement poverty of imagination cannot be concealed by dexterity of thematic treatment and modulation as a writer for the pianoforte he has made important enlargements of the technique not alone in his arrangement of easier compositions by earlier writers but still more by original demands upon the fingers 
as illustrated in his great sets of variations distinguished among german composers is max bruck eighteen thirty eight who was born at cologne and educated there and almost everywhere else in germany bruck is best known by his works for chorus with orchestra of which fritjof a roman song of triumph the song of three kings odysseus arminius are best known his concerto for violin is also played in all parts of the world but his opera of hermione made but a moderate success at berlin in eighteen seventy two riemann considers his greatest works for mixed chorus to be odysseus and arminius the song of the bell and for male chorus fritjof salamis and the normans his style is closely wrought musical full of deep and natural musical expression and well-colored instrumentation anton bruckner eighteen twenty four a highly gifted organist and composer has written seven symphonies in which the style is very modern and shows the influence of the theatrical style of wagner he is a composer of considerable vigor part two music in russia the awakening of musical art has been remarkable in all parts of the civilized world and in many countries not previously distinguished in music composers have arisen who have embodied the rhythms and spirit of the national songs in their works composed dramatic works upon national subjects and so have created a national school of music in some cases the works of these men have proven of world-wide acceptance in others they have set in operation musical life in their own country and have been followed quickly by younger composers working in a more cosmopolitan vein who have created works which have been taken into the current of the world's music and bid fair to hold an honorable position in the pantheon one of the most brilliant cases of this kind is russia that country so vast so powerful so mysterious the first composer in russia to distinguish himself and to create a national opera was mikhail ivanovich glinka eighteen o three eighteen seventy seven readers note another source shows the dates as eighteen o four to eighteen fifty seven born near selna his first schooling was at the adels institute in st petersburg where he distinguished himself in languages but presently under the teaching of boehm upon the violin and karl meyer in pianoforte and theory he showed the musical stuff which was in him leaving russia for his health he resided four years in italy constantly studying and incessantly composing on his way back to russia he placed himself for a time under the teaching of the distinguished s den in berlin in theory den recognized his originality and encouraged him to write russian music his first opera a life for the czar december ninth eighteen thirty six was a great triumph the subject was national the contrast between polish and russian subjects in the music was brilliant and actual or simulated folk songs gave a local coloring highly grateful to the russian audience the work received innumerable repetitions and still remains one of the most popular operatic works upon the russian stage his next work ruslan and ludmilla was also successful and liszt who happened to be in russia at the moment of its production accorded the young composer distinguished praise berlioz took up the pen in honor of glinka and his new russian school of music and so the composer's powers were widely celebrated during the remainder of his life glinka made long residences in the south especially in spain and several orchestral works with spanish coloring represent this portion of his creative career his last years were spent in rural life near st petersburg busy with new opera projects and especially seeking some rational manner of harmonizing the russian popular songs riemann calls glinka the berlioz of russia in the originality of his invention and his clever technique and something more namely that he created a national school of music for his country 
the list of his works is very long embracing compositions in almost every province there are two symphonies both unfinished several dances for orchestra a number of chamber compositions of various combinations of instruments a tarantella for orchestra with song and dance la kamarinskaya etc his operas however are his lasting monument anton von rubinstein the next great name in the role of russian music is that of the pianist anton von rubinstein eighteen thirty eighteen ninety five who was born at vekvotines in bessarabia his father presently removed to moscow where he carried on a manufactory of lead pencils the boy anton showed such talent for music under the skillful and affectionate teaching of his mother that at the age of ten he was brought before various musical authorities in paris for opinions concerning his talent his concert life began almost immediately from this period his mother went with him and wherever there were pauses of a few days the studies were resumed exactly as had been the case with mozart long before in eighteen forty eight he found a friend and appreciative companion in the princess helene and then he wrote several operas upon russian subjects of which two were published dmitri donskoy and toms der Nar the success of these works was such that in eighteen fifty four the composer was given a subvention for further foreign study by the princess helene and count Vilhorsky, upon which followed four brilliant years of incessant activity as virtuoso pianist and composer extending as far as london and paris rubinstein had already lived some years in berlin where he was as well known as at home returning to russia in eighteen fifty nine he received important appointments as musical director founded the st petersburg musical conservatory of which he remained the director until eighteen sixty seven when ensued a new series of concert journeys covering europe and in eighteen seventy two eighteen seventy three extending to america where he had a wonderful success carrying back to russia as proceeds of the american tour the at that time unprecedented sum of fifty four thousand dollars as pianist rubinstein was distinguished for his grand style broad and noble mastery of the instrument and his consummate sympathy and innate musical quality he was a player of moods at times playing like a god at other times his work disfigured by many errors but always interesting commanding and noble he played best the compositions of beethoven and schumann their innate depth and intense musical expression appealing to his richly gifted musical nature irresistibly his personality was commanding and attractive saint saon relates how rubinstein played in paris the concertos of beethoven and of rubinstein while saint saon conducted the orchestra at the close of the concerts rubinstein desired to give yet another in which he himself would direct the orchestra while saint saon should play it was for this occasion that the saint saon second concerto was written in his later life rubinstein lived like a prince in a beautiful estate near st petersburg the list of his works is something enormous of operas and dramatic works there are twelve several of which such as the tower of babel paradise lost and moses are biblical operas a type of dramatico mystical work created by rubinstein it contains the gravity and depth of oratorio combined with the intense realism of the stage there are six symphonies of which the famous and several times enlarged ocean symphony is perhaps best known a heroic fantasia for orchestra three character pieces for orchestra faust don quixote and ivan three concerto overtures a quantity of chamber music compositions for piano songs and the like in everything of rubinstein beautiful melodies are found his weakness lies in the development which occasionally is carried too far and with insufficient vitality of thematic work 
even greater than rubinstein as composer was the brilliant peter ilich tchaikovsky eighteen forty eighteen ninety three tchaikovsky was intended for the profession of the law in which he took his degree but his love for music asserted itself and after a short career as pupil in the st petersburg conservatory he was appointed teacher of harmony in that institution and entered upon his career as composer here he remained but a short time resigning in eighteen seventy seven after which he lived by turns at st petersburg in italy and in switzerland tchaikovsky was of a lyric musical nature and in his early life his taste was entirely for italian music this shows to a remarkable degree in all his earlier productions even if he had not himself published the fact so often and unmistakably in eighteen sixty nine he produced his first russian opera their voivoda which was followed by eight others of which the best known are eugene onegin and macula the smith several of these are now played throughout europe it was in his orchestral compositions however that tchaikovsky most illustrated his unexampled powers besides a number of brilliant and highly sensational overtures he composed six symphonies of unexampled sonority rich coloring and strange musical expression the fifth symphony of tchaikovsky met with almost universal recognition at the hands of the leading orchestral conductors of the world and the last the so-called tragic only deepened the impression of the composer's powers several points are unusual the themes themselves are original forceful and lend themselves easily to elaboration the harmonic treatment is highly original as if the author had found as bulow said new harmonic paths the instrumentation is richly colored and the climaxes are of vast power and effect the whole is a grandly composed tone poem which even if regarded as surpassing the proper reserve of symphonic form must nevertheless be counted as one of the most valuable enrichments of the world's orchestral repertory in several places in his works tchaikovsky introduces peculiarities of russian folk music as for example in the movement in five four measure in the fifth measure symphony nevertheless the works belong to the world's music being in no sense provincial narrow or limited aesthetically considered they illustrate the quick technique and overmastering energy of the race to which the composer belonged part three music in bohemia another country in which a notable musical revival has taken place during the latter part of the present century is bohemia where two names are to be mentioned bedrich schmettena eighteen twenty four eighteen eighty four is to be remembered as the creator or at least the awakener of bohemian music after short education at the prague university schmettena entered diligently upon the study of music becoming a brilliant pianist and as such forming one of the circle of enthusiastic and advancing souls surrounding liszt at weimar between eighteen fifty and eighteen sixty his first position as musical director was at gothenberg eighteen fifty six here he lost his wife the brilliant pianist katharina kolar in eighteen sixty one he made a long concert tour to sweden in eighteen sixty six he was appointed director of the music at the national theatre in prague a position which he held until obliged to give it up on account of loss of hearing in eighteen seventy four schmettena wrote eight operas upon bohemian subjects with music in the bohemian spirit one best known is the bartered bride which was the last composed he also wrote about ten symphonies or symphonic poems and a great variety of chamber music of his symphonic poems those most often played are in wallenstein's camp moldau zarka and visegrad in all these the titles are mainly suggestive although in sarka a program is quite closely followed schmettena was a brilliant composer but his value lies in his awakening of the bohemians to musical creation anton dvorak 
the most brilliant name in bohemian music and the one most valued by the world in general is that of anton de vorjac eighteen forty one who was the son of a butcher at mulhausen the boy early applied himself to the violin and after some years playing in small orchestras found a place as violinist in the orchestra of the national theatre at prague this was at the age of nineteen about ten years later he first attracted attention as composer by means of a hymn for mixed chorus and orchestra the attention of his countrymen thus gained dvorak fastened still more by a succession of compositions of varied scope ranging from the slavic dances and slavic rhapsodies to symphonies chamber music and choral works of great brilliancy in eighteen ninety two dr dvorak was called to new york as director of the so called national conservatory of music in eighteen ninety five he returned to bohemia the choral works of dvorak were generally first written for english musical festivals the spectre's bride stabat mater saint ludmilla the list of his works includes five symphonies for full orchestra several concert overtures a very beautiful air and variations for orchestra and seven operas upon bohemian subjects dvorak is one of the most gifted composers of the present time especially in the matter of technique his thematic treatment is always clever his orchestral coloring rich and varied and his style elegant if deficiency is to be recorded concerning him it is in invention or innate weight of ideas during his residence in america he promulgated the idea that an american school of music was to be created by developing the themes and rhythms of the negro melodies and he wrote a symphony from the new world in order to illustrate his meaning the second or slow movement of this work attained a distinguished success almost everywhere but the themes of the first and last movement are not sufficient for the treatment they receive this work has been more successful in europe than in this country perhaps the most notable quality of dr dvorak's personality is his naivete which shows well in his music he is quite like a modern haydn who has learned and remembered everything of musical coloration which has been discovered but who applies his knowledge in a simple and direct manner without straining after effect part four music in scandinavia foremost of scandinavian composers is edvard hagerup grieg eighteen forty three who was born at bergen norway he received his early musical education from his mother who was an excellent pianist and very musical by the advice of the celebrated violinist ole Bull, grieg was sent in eighteen fifty eight to leipzig for further instruction where he became a pupil of moscheles hauptmann reinecke richter and wenzel in eighteen sixty three he pursued further studies under gade at copenhagen in companionship with a talented young composer richard nordrak grieg set himself as he says against the faded scandinavianism of gade and mendelssohn intermingled and undertook to put into tones the real beauty strength and inner spirit of the northern folk's life he composed in many varieties of work and in eighteen seventy nine attained german recognition by playing his own piano concerto at the gavant house in leipzig grieg's works are full of poetry easy and natural expression and are pervaded by northern coloring so decided as in some cases to approach what in speech is called dialect nevertheless it is indubitable that his music has distinctly enriched the world's stream of tone poetry and introduced a new accent and voice he has distinguished himself in almost every department in songs choral work chamber music symphonies sonatas for piano and piano and violin and orchestral suites of which perhaps his two peer ghent are the most celebrated in person grieg is slight fair-haired with lovely deep blue eyes and a charming manner he is subject to pulmonary weakness and is compelled to reside much of his time in warmer climates than those of his native land an older composer than grieg is niels wilhelm gade 
1817-1890, of Copenhagen, who, after a thorough musical education received in his native city, attracted wider attention in 1841 by taking the prize for his concert overture Night Sounds from Ocean, the judges being F. R. Period, Schneider and Spohr, the violinist this gave gada a royal stipendium with which he immediately betook himself to study at leipzig where he came under the personal influence of mendelssohn an influence which he never outgrew at the death of mendelssohn he was appointed director of the gavant house but not proving in all respects satisfactory he held the position only a part of one season after the death of gleser in 1861 gade was made royal music director at copenhagen a position which he filled many years he was active as composer in every direction his published works embracing eight symphonies five overtures two concertos for violin and orchestra three violin sonatas several cantatas for mixed voices soli and orchestra and many other works the ultimate judgment of gade as a tone poet is likely to be that while distinctly talented he never attained imagination of the first order among the younger composers christian zindig eighteen fifty six is to be mentioned besides many works for chamber he has written one symphony which while not very original gives promise of better productions later part five music in england the relation of england to the higher art of music has been peculiar in the sixteenth century and earlier it was one of the most musical countries in europe but from the appearance of handel about seventeen twenty german music and german composers absorbed public attention to the exclusion of the natives no one of whom it may be added evinced creative powers of any high order england was a liberal patron of all the leading german masters from haydn who wrote twelve symphonies for the london philharmonic to beethoven whose ninth symphony was written for the same society mendelssohn whose elijah was written for the birmingham festival and wagner who received handsome compensation for conducting a series of concerts in london a little past the middle of the present century however more creative activity began to show itself among english composers until at the present time there are excellent english composers in all the leading departments of musical production the more celebrated names follow one of the most graceful and talented of english composers was sir william sterndale bennett eighteen sixteen eighteen seventy five who came of a musical stock and was duly trained as a choir boy in king's chapel and at the royal academy of music in eighteen thirty six he went to leipzig in order to profit by the gewandhaus concerts there and the friendship of mendelssohn here he produced a number of orchestral compositions which were so highly esteemed that in eighteen fifty three the directorship of the gewandhaus concerts were offered him after a short sojourn at leipzig he returned to london where he ever after lived highly honored as composer pianist teacher and man in eighteen fifty six he became the conductor of the london philharmonic concerts and in eighteen sixty six principal of the royal academy of music he was knighted in eighteen seventy one having previously been honored by degrees from cambridge and oxford he was professor of music in cambridge university from eighteen fifty six until his death as a composer bennett was influenced by mendelssohn but he had much delicacy of fancy and a certain originality of his own his compositions embrace four concertos for piano and orchestra several concert overtures for orchestra one symphony much chamber music a cantata the may queen eighteen fifty eight the woman of samaria eighteen sixty seven and a number of occasional odes anthems and part songs the successor of sterndale bennett as principal of the royal academy of music was sir george a macfarren eighteen thirteen eighteen eighty seven who although totally blind for many years before his death produced a greater number of important compositions than any other english composer of the century he was educated in london and in eighteen thirty four became one of the professors in the royal academy of music his first opera was produced in eighteen thirty eight devil's opera 
don quixote 1836 jesse lee 1863 and helvelin 1864 he wrote a number of cantatas for chorus and orchestra oratorios st john the baptist eighteen seventy three the resurrection eighteen seventy six joseph eighteen seventy seven and other works of less importance there are also many anthems several overtures and other pieces for chamber personally he was kind-hearted intelligent helpful and public-spirited the amount of work that he accomplished under the greatest of disadvantages is wonderful as well as its generally superior quality as a lecturer and teacher he was the foremost musical englishman of his time his compositions are strong and respectable but not especially inspired the successor of sir george macfarren in the principalship of the royal academy of music was alexander campbell mackenzie eighteen forty seven the youngest eminent english composer but also the most successful and promising he was educated as a violinist and resided at edinburgh as a teacher of the pianoforte and violin until his compositions attracted the attention of his countrymen and induced his being called to london the most important compositions of dr mackenzie up to the present time are the operas colomba eighteen eighty three the troubadour eighteen eighty six and the oratorio the rose of sharon eighteen eighty four there are several cantatas jason the bride the story of said eighteen eighty six and a considerable number of orchestral pieces of which two scotch rhapsodies and the overture to twelfth night are the best known he has also produced a violin concerto played by mr sarasate and much chamber music and songs on the whole dr mackenzie seems the most gifted english composer who has yet appeared end of chapter thirty nine end of a popular history of the art of music from the earliest times until the present reading by tony oliva albuquerque new mexico may two thousand thirteen